Smackamagaba got me a donation from Mr. Omar Gutierrez, who has donated before. Cool dude, man. And he turned 30 years old on May 12th. So happy birthday, Omar. 30 years old. You're such a baby. Anyway, he wants me to review what he thinks is the greatest album ever. He said it's the album that got him into music. And yes, we're talking about the historic Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Now, I can't remember the first time I heard this album, but I remember I owning this album at a very young age and totally digging Floyd. This is headphone music, and I absolutely love this album. I did like the three coming up more, it, but this album is very special to me that I don't really listen to it that often, and then today I did to study this album to talk about this review and my god what an amazing amazing album this is this is definitely worthy of being up there where it is right now because it's such a great emotional album it's kind of like a concept about life modern life i mean the whole thing is about existence about what pushes you either toward insanity or toward greed or whatnot. And this is the first time Roger Waters wrote all the lyrics to the Pink Floyd album. And it starts with Speak to Me, which is a uh, eerie opener. You know, I hear these voices and sound effects and it's a cool build up to this really cool opening track. And that goes into Breathe in the Air, which Man, David Gilmore's double tracking vocals is, to me, it's magical. It's so soothing the way he sings this. I just think it's a great opener, great chill opener that then goes into what I consider, even back then, I remember hearing this back then, thinking I was listening to the future. I'm talking about on the run. I mean, this is headphone music to the bat max, uh, the things going left and right. It sounds like, to me, this sounds like I feel, if I'm in some kind of car going through a tunnel, like the running man, that car, where they put Arnold in that thing and he goes through that tunnel. That's what this, like, I envision a ride. This, this song takes me places. I'm telling you, get your headphones, lay down, close your eyes, play this song, and your brain is gonna go driving. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. And to me, man, back then, it was primitive recording. They had like tapes in a loop. Now you can do everything so easy on a computer and pro, pro Tools. But this was really like just one guy calling, all right, start the tape here, start the tape there for it to all mix together. And it's phenomenal. I'm sure with computers and stuff, all processed and stuff, doing something like this, wouldn't have that human nature this track has. It sounds futuristic, it doesn't sound from the ordinary, but at the same time, it doesn't sound so precisely perfect how a computer would do it today. I think this is phenomenal. I absolutely love On The Run, ahead of its time for sure. And that goes into uh, time. And time, I gotta bring up my, my old friend Julie. A uh, beautiful, beautiful girl that I don't think is still with us because she became a junkie. But hopefully she is. Hopefully she's cleaned up somewhere. But the line that says, uh, when I come home cold and tired, I have to warm my bones. Before I, I know I'm fucking up the lyrics. But you know what I mean. I, I, warm my bones beside the fire. That reminds me so much of Julie because I remember us singing that line together and there was this connection with us when it came to this song and love it what a great 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 song about time is fleeting us you know and i it's got some rich harmonic female vocals where you know i don't really like female vocals that much in a lot of songs but i absolutely love it here it's amazing and the melodic guitar solo that gilmore brings it's like spacey and bluesy, kind of sounds futuristic as well, the way that guitar sounds and humming, you know. Time is amazing, I absolutely love it. And then it goes into the great gig in the sky. And man, 
the piano hits these chords that are just pure emotion. And that woman screaming like they told her, go in there and scream like you're in pain. And she does. She sounds like, you know, she sounds like she just lost somebody. Like somebody, like a parent just died or something like that. You hear this emotion and pain comes gushing out of this woman. Amazing, amazing performance by, uh, what was her name? I think it was Claire or something. But my God, she was amazing. And yeah, the screams that she does on this with that instrumentation going on behind it, pure, pure emotion. So you don't need words for this song. I mean, just the screaming says it all. So yeah, I absolutely love the great gig in the sky. And then you, we flip the album over to the single, I think it was a single, Money, great, great tune. Uh, you know, it's got that iconic bass line and the strange time signatures. And then like, it just turns into this whole different different song when uh, David Gilmore comes ripping. But even before that, and I'm not a fan of saxophone, but this guy playing the sax on this song nails it. Absolutely love the saxophone when it comes to the saxophone in the song Money. And again, David Gilmore bringing it. And uh, then it goes back into the song. And it's a song, you know, they pretty much wanted to make money. And this is kind of prolific for them, you know. It's a song that really brought them a lot of money. And uh, th this album stayed in the charts and probably still in the charts for all I know. For decades it was in the charts. And after this album came out, they were playing stadiums. Rolling in dough. So yeah, this is a pretty prolific song and absolutely love money. Awesome tune on here. And then it goes into Us and Them. And you know, the lyrics to this are about like, if the human race can be humane. And you know, really deep, meaningful lyrics. And Dave and, and Rick's uh, Wright's vocal harmonizing are so rich on here. And, you know, they had people in the studio, they asked them questions and they would talk during the recording. One of the people they asked was Paul McCartney because he was recording with Wings at the time and they, they recorded him talking, but they ended up not using it. They, they just used like engineers and I think another member of Wings might have been on there. But yeah, it's great. I, I absolutely love uh, Us and Them. And then it goes into Any Color You Like, which is... More like a streamlined approach from all these soundscapes of their past because Pink Floyd up to this point, a lot of their songs were like very soundscapey, but then you know, you heard what was coming with metal, with echoes and one of these days and you know, you you heard a little build up of what they were trying to do, so that when they did this, they, you know, all got together and said, Look, I wanna do we're gonna do some kind of I don't think it was called concept albums back then, but they wanted a theme. And this has, you know, I see this kind of call back a little bit to their soundscaping days, but it's more musical. And I think it's, yeah, it's just catchy and uh, it's awesome. And that goes into my favorite track, which is uh, Brain Damage, you know, which is somewhat about Sid Barrett and it's also about a person that's struggling with mental illness of losing that grip of reality and you know it's it's sad you know because i've known a few people and i i've i've known a couple alzheimer's people that just lose their mind and it's, it's so sad you know and i don't mean me to make light of this but you know a lot of these uh, rude comments i get are from people that are mentally ill, so you know, I mean, I may, I may make them disappear, but you know, I, I kind of feel bad for people that, you know, they just, they just attack people online, because mentally they're, they're not right. Uh, there's just something wrong with them. Uh, most of them, not all. All are just bona fide pickle whistlers. But there you go. That's uh, oh wait, we still got Eclipse, which is the epic ending. Uh, you know, and it's kind of like a, uh, it's so cool how 
it's kind of a final reflection on modern life where all that she does, all that she this, all that you that, you know? Just building up, building up, and then it just like comes to this ending. And it's just beautiful with the female vocals and the, it's just gorgeous. And then of course it goes into, you know, some heartbeat and some people talking. It's kind of got like a little weird soundscapey ending to it. But it's a great album, man. Recognizable album, you know, to the prism. You know, the, the music is just driven by emotion. I think this album is an absolute stunning musical journey. And I want to thank you, Omar, for making me put them on my headphones today and totally enjoying this, my friend. And again, happy birthday to you. And thank you so much, buddy, for the donation. And everybody out there, thank you for watching. If you like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel. And uh, give this video a like. It's good for the YouTube mannerisms. And click the notification bell. I would totally enjoy it. So, and, and appreciate it. And stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Before we get canceled, check out the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast with me and Wattzilla. We are the Podcast Kings. Link to the podcast is in the description below and also a link to the YouTube page. Check out all their episodes with visuals. And very soon, either Ian and I will learn how to go on YouTube Live. Might be soon. So check out the greatest podcast ever according to science.com. It's also God's favorite podcast and Satan's favorite podcast as well. So check out the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast before we get canceled.